Hey guys, all right, let's carry on. We're continuing with our chat about using Moji with theme to HTML. The easiest way it is today is pretty darn easy on the whole. Uh, let me see what we have now. <laughs> I recreated uh, one of the runs and I did it with the plumber theme and I just did it this morning so I could kick back off. A couple of things I wanna show you real quick. Um, one is this, let me just kind of close this thing. If you have, and this is a cool thing to have, is Dreamweaver, right? Uh, there are other HTML editors out there. Watch out for the ones that are cheap or free. <laughs> cheap HTML editors can recode stuff on the page. And Microsoft Word introduces Word Doc HTML, which is a little different. And that can screw with your pages too. Usually you don't want to try to edit these in Microsoft Word. You would not want to do that. And you wouldn't want to use something cheap like the Coffee Cup Editor or the, um, what is that, NGU or Nigu Negru or whatever it is, editor. There's some other eyeball editors out there. Some of you guys know what I mean. Uh, WYSIWYG editors are a little ris risky as well. Um, but, you know, what you see is what you get. <laughs> and that's why it's called WYSIWYG. Uh, having said all that, one thing I want to point out is this. When you go editing in here, of course, it looks different because it's showing you all your borders and stuff. And then these don't get to scroll because it's static on the page. So they just wrap down. And that's okay. This stuff doesn't mean anything at all. It just means I'm working on the thing. <laughs> okay. Um, let me see. A couple of things I do want to point out. One would be this. Uh, if you have extra spacing, and sometimes you'll see things like that, there will be a, a space. And then if you know, and you should know, NBSP, semicolon, space again, in UTF-8 encoding, that creates an artificial double space. You actually wind up with three because you have a space here and a space here. And then this is coding that says, yes, 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 I want this to be a space. How's that work? Well, think about it. If I take it out and I refresh, there's only one space here, even though there's physically two up here. Why? Because, well, that's white space. Boom, 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 boom. Refresh, just one space. Because it's, you know, again, that's white space. But if I want the white space to count, if I want to say yes, but I really do want to put some distance in here, for whatever reason, you're trying to put a smiley at the end of the sentence and you need it to have some room. How do you do it? You go like this, space, for instance, and then you put another NBSP semicolon. You could just do a bunch of those, by the way. You could just go ampersand NBSP, ampersand NBSP, and you could have a bunch. Now that forces spacing in there. And the other way to do it, just to keep in mind, is that the browser window will see that is a reason for a space separator. It sees a space, then it sees something else happen that's coding. So if you have Atlanta comma space, that counts. And then this continues to count, there will still be three spaces. Okay? And even if you go like this and make that a space instead, then yeah, you still have three spaces, a space, and then a space, and then a space, right? By the way, this is all stuff that we've taught before, so sorry I'm rehashing it so much, but I'm just trying to get all the stuff in one spot and make it easy and catch things up. All right, uh, another one. Okay, so usually you want to take extra spacing out. <laughs> I just want to make the point that's easy to make edits, and especially if you have an HTML editor. And by the way, uh, you should follow the link that we have on here mojidashcrew.com if you go to the resources page okay some of you guys are thinking isn't that expensive dreamweaver well take a look if you go to the resources page and you look for dreamweaver on here this is something like a buck a day to rent uh it's it's literally pretty cheap now i think they may even have a better option by now there may even be a version that's like 9.95 a month you know yeah take a look at this 9.95 okay that's for photography latest version of Photoshop. That's for all you guys who want to get your access to Photoshop. It's a good idea. It's a really good thing to get. Now, if you can find Photoshop along with Dreamweaver, right? Go looking around and see what you can find. But um, there are choices. That's funny. I haven't been here in a while. <laughs> so they updated the links. <laughs> okay. Well, going to have to go dig around and see what you can find. <laughs> But there's going to be somewhere in there. It's going to be talking about things that you can do with Dreamweaver. Sometimes it's best just to go to the beginning after all. Adobe.com, of course, they're the makers of, you know, Dreamweaver and Photoshop and everything. And so we can start by looking in there for what we're after and chase it down. Somewhere in there is going to be a Dreamweaver option. 
okay I'm not gonna try to find it right now uh, anyway there you go that's worth it okay oh let me show you something else too that's kind of cool about the site versus everything else um, where was I well save all um, oh yeah uh, you want to make edits like this let me just continue my chat before I quit there were things like uh, if you have the end of a token and then a space and an exclamation point or something you can just fix that right pull the question mark in pull the exclamation point in okay so if you have extra spacing like that just pull it in you can even do it just in the design view down here you don't have to do it in the coding view keep in mind what's cool about Dreamweaver is anything you highlight down here it jumps right there up here so you can see what you're doing pretty easily. If I highlight this guy down here, it shows me where I am. I can tell it's an H2, header, second level, you know, header, header two <laughs> uh, formatting because it says so, right? And I can tell that before there was a horizontal rule, you know, and that's exactly what I see there, the little horizontal rule, right? And that's that bit of coding. So you can learn stuff really, really quick by using Dreamweaver anyway. It just gets you comfortable with the code view. And you can make your edits. Now remember, if you take a token away, of course it'll go away on both ends. It'll go away here and here because this is the same thing. It's the same page. Okay. And if I wanted to save that, well, keep in mind, first of all, it doesn't make sense. I broke the sentence. It doesn't mean anything anymore. Uh, but if you do that, you have to take that away from the CSV file as well. Okay. It has to come off of here. And if you have the unique CSV file, you have to take it off of there as well. Now, when I say take it off, I mean drop the whole column, right? Don't just leave an empty space in the data. What, what bar was that again? Var 20. See how I undo and redo? Okay. That's var 20. And then you can save it. If it's not saved, there's an asterisk up here. So, like, if I make a change now, you, even if I'm in the same boat, it's got an asterisk. Hit Control S to save, and there you go. You know, or just hit File Save. And I'll save all. If you can't save it, then it's saved. Save all. Just does the same thing. All right, that was 20, right? Well, when I say take it out of here, I don't just mean clear the contents, okay? You don't want to do that. You're going to have a hole in your data. You cannot have a hole in your data. So you must get rid of that. Delete. There. Now save that, right? Okay. Let me go back. So what you would normally do is just delete the column to begin with delete okay now keep in mind if I delete the var 20 it's because I took it off the page right except what if I had that var 20 in more than one spot on the page if it still exists somewhere else like in my meta description or my page title or somewhere else like just down here somewhere I put another one a copy of it down here anywhere because you can put these bars anywhere you want all right, then it is still on the page and I have no business taking it off of here. It needs to be on here, <laughs> right? So I think you get it. They have to match, right? Otherwise, it doesn't make sense. How can you have a var here if it's missing from here, right? It's got to be in here somewhere. If you need to hide it, go up to the meta keywords and hide it in your keywords somewhere. Just stick it in here along with everything else you have. And you can. You can just create another comma. And then put something like uh, var 20, you know. There, you just satisfied the criteria of having var 20 on the page no matter what. So, it's on the page. And if it's on the page, that means it stays in. Okay. That's good if you want to keep things in archive and you want to use them in different circumstances. And you don't want to completely lose them, but you just have to hide them in the meantime. That's a really, really good way to do it. Okay, and I can leave it in there whether I'm using it or not. I can leave it in there but still use it on the page, right? Like it should be here, right? All right, let me put it back <laughs> and I'll continue with the conversation, okay? All right, so what I want to do real quick, I'll save all, is actually explain what this is in case you don't know because I think you're starting to glean how it works now, right? And you should. As the page is getting created, every time, this is how Moji works, okay? When, and and uh, there is one thing I want to make a point about. See the background? Watch how easy it is. I don't like it. I just want to change it. If I go changing it, this is on the website, right? If I change it on the website, it will change all my Moji pages no matter where I put them. So if I go here to, let's say, website theme and colors, 
and I decide I don't like that pattern. I want to use something that looks a little more like a splash of clean water, okay, a better design. I can go into my backgrounds and my images or wherever it is you put stuff. You can create new folders in here for ease. You can stick a folder in here. You can right click and hit new subfolder. You can even go in there and right click and hit new subfolder if you really want to organize all your stuff. Like what can you have for backgrounds? You can have background gradients, background full page, uh, background headers. So you could actually create three separate subfolders inside backgrounds and just keep all your stuff organized that way. There, I like that because it looks like um, good water. I'll, I'll show you in a minute, just clean water, sort of a clean water feel. Take a look. There, that makes the website look a lot newer, right? A lot better. It's amazing how much a background helps. And look at this one. Yep, it's on my uh, computer and it updated too, right? That's the coolness. If I change the color of the fonts or the color of the bars or um, the color of this thing, if um, I want to um, change the, the font type, you know, uh, anything like that that's read from the CSS files, Okay, if I change how header three works, you know, that's a header three. This is a header two. If I want to change the rules for that, then when I change them in the site, it changes everything out here, you know. Okay, let me get back to what I was doing. That's this. So when we're creating our pages, what do you think it's doing? It's exactly doing what a spinner would do. Uh, in that sense, it's doing what a spinner would do. Are you hunting for, that would be are you var 20 for the atlanta georgia plumbers that var 20 var 29 the var 31 var 32 and a var 35 var 36 question mark so <laughs> what happened there are you so when the first page is created by moji it will choose one of these words randomly no matter how deep this list goes it could be a thousand deep it will just randomly choose one and on the page wherever it sees that one it will enter it again and again and again that one because that's what the purpose of this page is for to use that one okay for var 20 wherever var 20 comes up okay so are you hunting for the Atlanta Georgia plumbers that will present the best quality service see so that will certainly provide the highest um, solution you know, or highest service will certainly present the highest solution. Any combination of these is going to happen. Page by page, it's just randomly going to choose. What does that mean? Just the act of the randomness is actually going to be so extensively different from page to page to page that you're going to wind up with unique pages. But for all of you guys who go, well, I mean, what if I only had two variables going all the way across and I had a thousand of these columns? And the answer is right. You didn't create enough variability, you know. Uh, the wider you go, the deeper you want to go on average, okay. But this is okay. We aren't trying to create big, massive sites. That's old style, old hat, and that's not what we need to do. We're trying to create something like a 500-page website, like I said, which fits perfectly for this guy. Now, let me expand your mind just a touch more around this concept of how variables work. A variable can be anything in Moji. In a typical spinner, it has to be words, right? Atlanta, Georgia, plumbers, right? Those are words. These are words. These are words. Words, 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 words. Okay. What can you do with um, uh, Moji? You can make anything in the source code. If I were to view the page source, everything can be a var. Literally, watch this because that's how it'll get printed out on the page. Look at this. The domain can be a var. The subdomain can be a var. Uh, the folder called CSS could be a var. It's just why make it a var. Style.css could be a var. If I wanted to introduce that, if I wanted to come out with variant style sheets and test different styles and have some of my pages use one of them and some of my pages use the other, how would you do it? Well, first you would go to your style sheet, take a copy of it, download it, right? Rename it to like style2.css and upload it back in here. So you have an alternate style sheet, a style2.css, say, or whatever you want to call it, something.css. So it acts like a CSS file. Um, and you would make changes on that second style sheet. Some of you guys know exactly how to do that. That doesn't surprise you at all. You can try a different background image. You can try different colors for the website. 
hot colors, cold colors, different fonts, whatever you want to do. Okay? And upload it, and that becomes your second style sheet. So that would mean if the page was being told to use style2.css, then this page would look as different as that style sheet got made to be, your style2.css. Right? For those of you who don't get what I'm talking about, don't worry about it. <laughs> because you're not going to need to do this. Okay? This is just for guys who want to know. So anything can be as uh, anything on the page can be a var. You could like randomly swipe and call this var some var that's not used, right? Well, there's nine, ten, no var eleven, no var twelve. I could stick a var eleven or twelve in here. Okay, I could just insert a new var, insert, call it like var twelve, and you know what it's going to be? Well, one version of it will be this. <laughs> This is, is ridiculously weird. Whoops, I wouldn't do it that way. I would do it like this. Double click, paste, okay, and then save it. And then the next one would be just like it maybe. And see how it pushes everything down. That's just the way it looks, by the way. It doesn't matter. Okay. And then the next one would be just like it, except for one little change you made, <laughs> which is style2.css except i don't think i i included it in that section now that's just ridiculous isn't it um and again just pull that up right and that's okay you don't have to worry about it now that's just ridiculous and because then on the html page of course i would delete all this and put in exactly var12 right there it would be right up against the dash for fine locally here let me can i um yeah i can yeah. So like if your bar really did that <laughs> and it was like this, yeah, you could do it. You could have the beginning of the bar right there, exactly right after the dash. It would be exactly like this. Okay. But var 12 and you would literally and exactly overwrite that exactly so that it exactly matches what you put in on the other side. Okay. In here. All right. And it would literally choose one of those page by page to fill this spot, you know, to replace that token. Now that's just insanely weird, but it does explain how Moji works. Moji allows you to make anything in the source code variable. Now I'm going to delete this because I mean, that's just crazy. <laughs> if I did want to create a new var like that, insert one that made sense, it would be like this var 12. Okay. And it would say style.css and underneath style2.css. Okay. Now, that's cool, isn't it? That means that half of my pages are going to come out with this style sheet, the other half with that. What if I'm thinking into the future? I don't know what I want to do for different style sheets yet, but maybe I'm going to want to try some new things and I want to see immediately how it affects those pages without having to... Um, go create new pages. You know what you could do? You could come out with them right now. You could make a style3.css, a style4.css, a style5.css, however deep you want to go. And what's the point? Just take your style sheet and copy it and upload it and call it style1.css for now. And then make another copy too. Just copy it a bunch of times. Upload it, make it style two. Upload it, make it style three. Have them in here. Okay? They may be exactly the same for now because you're not sure what you want to change. But later, when you do think of changes you want to make, you can just go into one of these, make the change, and then look around some of your pages, the pages that are using that style sheet, uh, to see how the changes look. Do you get it? Like whether you're going to use a different image. Okay, that could be what's different about style four. It doesn't use that background image. It uses a different background image. And any page that got produced by Moji, which says style four when it got produced, okay, is going to show your new background image now because that's what the style sheet says to do. See, style sheets make web pages more dynamic that way because you can change things in one place that affect the entire website without having to change in one page at a time, right? That's why when I changed the background on this thing, it changed all the pages, the ones that were online and the ones that were offline, right? Do you get it? There we go. And 
you know, that's the cool thing about style sheets, right? So you don't really have to know how to build them. You just have to be able to recognize what you're staring at. There's a background color. You can kind of tell it's a background color. What if you changed it? Here's one for this background. It's for an A active. That means when you click a link, right, what color is it supposed to be for a split second before it goes? Okay. Things like that. There's a hover color, you know, uh, all that kind of stuff. And so it's just the more you know about style sheets, the, the more fun your life becomes. But that's style sheet stuff. Okay, let me kill all that, all right? I want to get out of there. What do I want to say? I want to say that with Moji, you can make anything variable, okay? And that's what you do here. Now, if you're going to produce these, don't forget, you have to have them up. You have to actually physically create them on the website, right? Or else some of the pages will get produced and say style 3, and there won't be a style 3, right? Like, if I open this now, it looks good. If I had it try to access style 3, okay, I don't have one up, then it will look bad until what? Until either I fix the link here, back, or I upload a style 3, okay? That's the best it can do um, without seeing that style sheet. It can get at the other ones, because I didn't change those numbers, uh, but this is the best it can do with a page until I upload a copy of the style sheet called style three, right? Because otherwise it's a broken link. Okay. All right. I beat that to death. <laughs> Just so you know, it's possible. What could you do with the very concept of this? Lots of things. Let me get rid of this, by the way, because I don't even have a bar 12 in there. If I did, I'd just make it that on the page, right? You guys understand what I mean? Um, because that's exactly like anything else. I would do this. Style.css is exactly what I put there. So that is where I would put bar 12, just like this. Okay? That's it. I wouldn't break this side. It should be right up against that slash. There should be a double quotes immediately after it because there's not any, um, not supposed to be a space after that bar. Spaces are between words, like down here. How oh, come? Aha, see, word, space, word, space, word, space, word, space, word, space, and then finally a question mark, no space there. There shouldn't be a space there, right? That's the idea. Here, it doesn't really matter because it's just a closing H1 tag, and this is just invisible, you know, because it's a header line, right? And this is just an invisible space, really. So whether you take it out or not, it's perfectly fine. You can do it or not do it. Same thing with the break tag. You know, like after the break tag, that's an invisible space. You know, you can leave it in or pull it out. It doesn't matter. Google doesn't care. Google never expects that much cleanliness uh, because it's ridiculous. A perfectly clean um, um, HTML page should have no extra white space, theoretically, right? But white space is there specifically to make it easier for all of us guys who have to deal with coding at all to recognize things. Okay, that's the purpose of white space, to make it easier for us to see where things end and where things begin. Okay, that's why all this white space exists. That's why, as long as we don't break a tag, don't break a tag, that broke a tag. Okay, as long as we don't break a tag, we can put as much white space in, we can create as much spacing in between things as we like, and that's okay. Now, that just made three spaces out of one, right? There, do you, do you notice I kind of caught on to that? That's a space, right? And so I just artificially created a space before and after to make that three spaces. But I took it out. <laughs> anyway, it's an empty div, div, uh, divider, right? Div container, div tag, because all that is is a space. When the thing starts and ends, just a space. That's just to put it there. <laughs> okay, having said that, again, you don't really have to know a lot of the coding or anything. This is just so you can know it's possible. Um, we could do what? We can introduce any amount of variability into the page title. We can introduce variability into the style sheet uh, or whatever, into the coding. I mean, I could have different bars for every one of these things if I really wanted to go that crazy. I could. By the way, if you say that the bar is style.css on the Excel sheet, that's what you typed in, then that's what you make bar 12, style.css. But if all you typed was style, style 1, style 2, style 3, then this would be your part 12 now, wouldn't it? Because you didn't put the .css in there. 
it can only be in one place. If I put it in here, I can't also have it here, or it's going to be style.css.css again, right? I can only have it here or here, right? But that's just common sense, right? All that this is is a variable that replaces this whole thing with whatever was in that cell. That's all it is, okay? And since it has choices, it's going to make pages with choice versions, okay? And you can control the choices, okay? All right, that's cool. All right, let me see. I want to show you the next thing in the next topic. Forget it. <laughs> next topic, we are going to actually create some bars and put them in. And then we'll show you how to do keyword research, and you'll understand the value of it is to be able to grab keywords and control keyword density in the page by introducing new VARs into the project. Okay? And to do that properly, I'm going to actually um, force that unique VARs to exist real quick before I do it. That's what I'm going to do. Okay? So, load. Let's go to my plumber. Okay, desktop. Plumber. Boom. Oh, yeah, I'm not loading a profile because I don't have one finished. I'm just bringing in an HTML file. But get the right one. It's a different folder. That's where it left off last. Go back here, get the right one. Okay. Now it's going to the right place because that's where I just went. Okay. And I can just put something in here. Dummy.com slash project. Okay. Don't upload. Next. And guess what it just did? Create that uniques. That's really all I needed to do. Okay? That way I have this. And all it does is reproduce the same bars that exist in this file. Okay? It's like the same ones. Except it puts an ID column at the beginning so it can start counting the pages that it produces. Okay? And um, if I need to create new vars, I need to make sure to put it on both sides of the house. I need to put it here and here. If I take a var out, I have to take it out of here and here. Okay? All right. I'm going to do in the next video some of exactly this sort of thing. And by the way, it's only showing one because it only needs to show one. Um, this file changes all the time. Sometimes it gets really big. Sometimes it starts over and gets really small. Um, don't worry about it. Normally, you're not going to touch the thing. Okay. The only time you ever open this is to add in a var manually or take a var out manually because you're doing it here. Okay. All right. Next video, we're actually going to introduce some vars and you're going to see how it is that we're going to introduce keywords and keyword density. Stuff that we would like to control. We can just see ways to do it really easily and the variability that we have to do it with. Okay.